electrochemical cell. Electrochemical cell is a cell in which chemical energy converts into electrical energy. In electrolytic cell, electrical energy will convert it into chemical energy. Okay, this electrochemical cell is also called as galvanic cell. The name of the scientist galvano. Okay, so let's see an example of this electrochemical cell and uh, we will see the working of it. Okay. This is copper rod, dipped in copper sulfate solution. This is zinc rod, dipped in zinc sulfate solution. And in between, the connecting part is called as salt bridge. And these two electrodes are externally connected through a copper wire. And in between, a voltmeter is kept. Okay. So, this part or this half cell is called as anodic half cell and this part is called as cathodic half cell. In the anodic half cell, oxidation reaction occurs and in the cathodic half cell, the reduction reaction occurs. And overall, in electrochemical cell, a redox reaction will happen where anode get oxidizes and cathode gets reduced. Okay, so remember every time when we need to draw or represent this electrochemical cell on the left side we need to write the anode and on the right side we need to write the cathode. Okay, so the first is the anodic half cell and the second one is cathodic half cell. Okay, so see the anodic reaction now. Zinc gets oxidizes and gives rise to Zn plus 2 plus 2 electrons. And uh, the cathodic reaction is copper plus 2, which is present in a solution, will take the two electrons from the zinc, which is coming from the external circuit, and it forms a copper. It will be deposited at the cathode and the overall reaction if you try to write it zinc plus copper sulfate see here this SO4 minus 2 are the common ions in between the two half cells so zinc plus copper sulfate will give rise to copper plus zinc sulfate okay so on the external circuit the electrons will move and in the internal circuit that is through the salt bridge the common ions that is SO4 minus 2 in this case will travel from cathode to anode and the electrons will travel from the anode to cathode in the external circuit and the ions will travel from cathode to anode through the salt bridge thereby to complete the a circuit. Okay, this is the one of the best example for the electrochemical cell. If you try to represent this electrochemical cell and it will be represented in this way. Zinc, zinc sulfate of some molarity or the liquid and then the salt bridge and copper sulfate and the copper rod. So this whole systematic diagram can be represented by this cell notation process. Okay. okay. This is redox reaction, this is oxidation reaction, this is cathodic reaction and the overall cell reaction will become the redox reaction. Okay. When we connect a standard zinc electrode to the standard copper electrode, that is standard zinc electrode means when the pure zinc metal is dipped in one molar solution of zinc sulfate, then it will become as a standard zinc electrode. In the same way, the copper rod, when it is dipped in 
one molar copper sulfate solution, then that will become standard copper electrode. Okay, when we connect these two, then the EMF produced by this cell will become EMF of the cell will become E cathode minus E anode and that will be 0 0.76 minus of minus 0 0.034 and that will become 1.1 over it. Okay, so this is the electrochemical cell or the galvanic cell. Can be called as the galvanic cell or concentration cells. Till now we have seen an electrochemical cell where two different metals are placed in a two different half cells and they have been connected through the external circuit. So because of the difference in the electrode potentials, there the potential difference develops and the electrons travel from zinc to copper. But here in case of these concentration cells, the two electrodes will be same but there will be a difference in their concentration of the electrode or the concentration of the electro electrolyte varies. Are you getting me? So by the difference in the concentrations of any two liquids or any two metals, there is a possibility of development of liquid junction potential and thereby that will become the driving force of the electrons through the external circuit. So that is the reason it is said as concentration cells. Okay, the concentration cells are of two types. First concentration cells, the potential difference develops because of difference in concentration of the same type of electron. Same type of electron. Okay. So, the concentration cells are of two types, that is electrode concentration cell, the other is electrolyte concentration cell. The electrode concentration cell where the concentration of electrode is different. So anode and cathode, the concentration of the electrode will be different. Okay, so this kind of electrode concentration variation can be possible for the gas electrode like hydrogen electrode or the other case, the amalgamated, the amalgamated electrode. This amalgamated electrode means the metal concentration will be varied by adding the mercury into it. Okay, so thereby the electrode concentration will vary. Whereas in case of electrolyte concentration cell, if the electrolyte concentration is different, then uh, the possibility of the potential difference development happens, then the electrons will flow through the external circuit. Okay. So this electrolyte concentration variation may be done with the slightly change in their molarity or the normality of the electrolyte used in the two different cells. Okay, let's see the two different types of it. And here you can take any sort of electrode where the concentration of the electrolyte is uh, varied. Okay, take for example, in case of hydrogen electrode if the pressure at the electrode is varied that is in one case if it is P1 atmosphere and in the another case if it is P2 atmosphere then the potential difference will be developed in these two electrodes and these are regarded as the concentration cells. Okay, so here if the concentration of 
the P1 is more than P2, then P1 will be acted as, it will be decided where the P1, P1 and P2, the concentration or the, the pressure variation will decide which will act as anode and which will be act as cathode. At anode, the oxidation occurs, so H2 will give rise to 2H plus, plus 2 electrons. Okay, and at cathode, the reduction occurs, that is 2H plus ions will take the 2 electrons and gives rise to H2 gas. Okay, so in this case, at, at cathode, the H2 gas is liberated and at anode, the H2 gas will be sent into the hydrogen electron. Okay, so here in this case, if P1 is greater than P2, then where the pressure is higher at the electrode, that will act as anode. Are you getting it? So where the pressure is more at the electrode, that will act as anode. Okay, so take the, as the concentrations of H plus and H plus ions at the anode and cathode are same, and we need to consider here P1 and here P2 as a concentration variance. Okay, and apply Nernst equation to this, so we will get E cell is equal to E naught minus 2.303 RT by 2F log that is the products by reactants. In this case, it will be P2 by P1. Okay, so in this way, the Nernst equation will be applied. So we know that the standard hydrogen electrode, electrode potential is 0. So we will take E cell is equal to minus 2.303 RT by 2F log of P2 by P1. Whereas in the other case, when to the two hydrogen electrodes, when two hydrogen electrodes are connected, where the pressure is one atmosphere pressure at the electrode, but the difference in the concentration of the H plus ions. Here it will be C1 and here it will be C2. In this case, the concentration of the electrolytes are different, but at the electrodes, the concentrations are same. So even in this case also, the potential difference varies with respect to the concentration of the electrolyte. So there is a chance of production of electricity through the potential difference. Okay, so what happens at the anode, if you write down, at anode, of course, the H2 will give rise to 2H plus plus 2 electrons and at cathode 2H plus plus 2 electrons will give rise to H2 gas. Okay, so in this case, this 2H plus will be C1 and it will be C2. Okay, so for this particular case, the concentration of C2 will be more than C1 so that the anode will become where the electrolyte concentration is lesser. So in case of electrolyte concentration cell, where the electrolyte concentration is less, that will be regarded as anode. Whereas in case of electrode concentration cell, where the electrode concentration will be more that will be regarded as anode. So for this, if you apply uh, the E cell Nernst equation, it will be E naught minus 2.303 by 2F log of, it will be C1 by C2. It will be C1 by C2. Okay, now E cell will become minus 2.303 by 2F 
log c1 by c2 will be the nonest equation. Okay, so this is the concentration cells concept that is electrode concentration cell and electrolyte concentration cell. Here the key point you need to remember is the concentration cells with transference or the concentration cells with transport number and the other case is the concentration cell without transference or without transport number. Okay, so when in this case if you consider we know that the concentration of H plus ions here is as same as the H plus ions present at the anode and cathode are same here. So, in this case, we no need to use two separate half cells, rather we can keep these two half cells into a single container so that there is no use of salt bridge at all. But whereas, in this case, the electrolyte concentration cells or the electrolyte concentration is different so, in this case, we need to use this salt bridge for sure. So, whenever a salt bridge is used, that salt bridge will cause the liquid junction potential. Okay, because through the salt bridge, the ions will move from one place to the other place, as an anode to cathode or cathode to anode through the salt bridge, then there will be a chance of development of liquid junction at the salt bridge ends. Okay, so even this liquid junction potential will drive the electrons to pass through the external circuit. Okay, so in the concentration cells with transference there will be a salt bridge and the concentration cells without transference there is no salt bridge. And the liquid junction potential is present for the concentration cells with transference and the liquid junction potential is absent for the concentration cells without transference. Okay, so these points are very important for your multiple choice questions in your mid-exam point of view. Okay.